Hello, my name is Tim Island. I'm a scout leader and keeper of the secrets of fire. What you're about to see is a shortcut developed by an expert. It is no substitute for expertise. Always be cautious with fire. This is a wax-based fire lighter I developed with a soft core of cotton wool and wood chips. It's cheap and easy to make. It's stable, clean and water resistant, and you can light it with a spark. Today I'm going to show you how to make hundreds of these from a single candle and a few household materials. First, some tough cardboard down for spills. For this batch, we'll be using a single 500 gram paraffin wax candle and some waste from the previous batch. You'll also need some wood shavings from the pet section and some balls of cotton wool in either large or small sizes. For small lighters, use small cotton balls and silicon ice cube or confectionery trays with small shapes. Stars are fun, hearts are great, but square shapes are easier to pack in a tin and I have multiple trays, which makes the process faster. For large lighters, use large cotton balls and silicon ice cube or confectionery trays with large shapes. These ones would let you make hearts, spooky ghost faces, magical unicorns, or a whole bunch of upvotes. Throw a handful of wood shavings into about half a bag of cotton balls and shake the whole business until you have a bunch of furry little Ferrero Rochers. Now you'll need two hot plates and two stainless steel saucepans, ideally with metal handles. Finally, you'll need a working tray, a dipping cup, mine is aluminium, a thick handled spoon, a thin handled spoon, and a stainless steel teapot with an integrated metal filter. Medium for melting, low for cooling, cup for dipping, teapot for filtering, thick handled metal spoon for when you want to bring the temperature down of your wax by stirring it, thin for when you don't. If you must use gas hobs, you will need heat diffusing simmer rings, and they look like this. Ta-da! Ta-da! Now let's melt some wax. My hobs go up to six, Low is set to a little under one, and medium goes no higher than three. In goes the candle, and the waste from the last batch. We do not hurry melting the wax. Slowly and gently does it. If vapor is coming off, you're coming in too hot. Pull up. Pour the melted wax into your metal teapot, then gently strain it into the low heat saucepan before leaving it all to cool for a bit. When ready, pour your near viscous wax into the dipping cup. Then stir occasionally until you hit the sweet spot when wax sticks to your spoon. Results vary with perfume and pigments, but generally viscosity kicks in at just under 60 degrees Celsius, by which time you'll see a skin on top of the wax. Now you dip each cotton ball in turn, three times each, then press it into the silicon mold and pinch or wipe the top gently. The wax will start to solidify in your fingers as you finish the tops off, so everything important happens in this moment. Note I'm using gloves. You can use ordinary washing up gloves if you like. The wax isn't all that hot, but if you're going to be doing this hundreds of times, you will want to avoid nerve damage to your digits, because like you, they need to feel things. I'm going to do a short set of waterproof lighters here. It uses mostly the same method, but while the wax is still malleable, you fold the waste into the middle from the edge, and then you press and wipe to finish off the top and edges out of the weight cup. This is more time consuming and the resulting lighters are harder to crack open in their finished state, but they are waterproof when they're done and it's faster than double dipping them, which is the alternative path to waterproof. Me, I prefer an unfinished and merely water resistant top because the lighters are easier to break open and start that way. In a moment, we're going to zoom in and get a little closer to the action to show how easy it is. The wax forms a seal around the cotton before you're in for the second dip, meaning the cotton remains soft and wispy on the inside even when you press it into the mold, so there's no need to be gentle. Dip, 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 shove, pinch. Dip, 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 shove, pinch. So on and so forth. It's quite relaxing when you get into a rhythm. Wait for each tray to cool, and then turn over and push them out like you would ice cubes. Then trim with scissors. Pour any offcuts into your waste pile for the next batch. From that 500 gram candle and some waste, I've produced 108 fire lighters weighing a total of 470 grams, and some waste. That's enough to fill my tobacco sized tin a dozen times over, all from one candle. To use the lighters, you just break open the top, pull some of the cotton out like guts, and throw a spark into those wispy threads. The wood shavings help to take that reaction to the wax, creating a chain reaction specifically designed to maximize pyrolysis. From here, the cotton heart turns into a wick, 
drawing the fuel into the reaction until every last scrap is gone. Watch the wax around the fire lighter as it burns. It doesn't melt or drip. And with the exception of a few minerals and some stray carbon that's released in the smoke, all of the solid matter in the lighter is transformed by heat into gas, generating more heat and continually feeding that reaction until all you're left with is a ball of what used to be cotton that is now an aerated fluff of coal that's eager to oxidize and still giving off heat. Heat, of course, is the heart and start of your fire. Flames are just showing off. So that's my fire lighter recipe. It's one of my secrets. But teaching you about fire and its secrets is going to take a little more effort. I've finally started a Patreon account, and my first intended project is a series of videos teaching the secrets of fire, starting with pyrolysis and the advantage of knowing what's happening at a molecular level and what's powering that at an atomic level. It sounds complicated, but I can assure you it is far easier than diving right in and rubbing two sticks together. And you can help to bring these lessons to life. Mastery of fire is not only a useful skill, it's a deeply rewarding pursuit with therapeutic properties and even social rewards that predate civilization. The first time you turn a spark into a flame and your heart goes woof, you'll begin to understand. I'd like to teach you and I figure we can also make and use some nifty tools and some downright gorgeous fire lighters along the way. On that note, what you should do right after you subscribe is leave a note in comments saying if you would like to see hearts, ghosts, unicorns or upvotes in the next video. Thanks for your time, please support my Patreon and I hope to see you in the next episode. Cheers all!